We have long been told that Jesus came to earth to die for our sins so we would have eternal life. Now that you've matured and are able to indulge in independent thinking and do your own investigation, have you been able to see past this regurgitated surface level incomplete information that has been thrown at you for what seems to be forever? If you haven't, stick around so we can look into this together. Christ came to earth to die and free us from the obligation of following the Ten Commandments, which were too difficult to keep. By his sacrifice, Jesus rendered the old laws obsolete, replacing them with a new covenant of grace. Adherence to the commandments is no longer necessary for salvation because Jesus' death paid the penalty for all sin, thereby liberating believers from the burden of strict obedience. Believers in Christ must know that salvation is a gift received through faith in Christ alone, not by works or adherence to any law. This grace-based salvation simplifies the path to eternal life, making it accessible to all regardless of their ability to follow the stringent requirements of the Old Testament laws. Accordingly, Christianity is more inclusive and focused on the loving relationship between God and believers rather than on legalistic adherence to rules. As a Christian, you should know there's one fatal flaw with this belief system. Here's why making this one mistake will prove to be deadly. In the cosmic battle between good and evil, God wielded the power of truth and righteousness. Unlike him, Satan used deception and flattery. Satan twisted God's intentions, suggesting that divine laws were restrictive and self-serving. To counter these claims, a grand demonstration of the justice and perfection of God's government was necessary, observable by all heavenly beings and worlds. Satan cast himself as a benevolent reformer, claiming to seek the universe's betterment. However, his true motives and nature needed to be exposed. He claimed he was not in rebellion, but his actions and the resulting discord were the evidence needed to unmask him. The conflict in heaven sparked by Satan was blamed on God's law and governance. Satan argued that all evil originated from divine administration. He claimed to offer improvements to Jehovah's statutes, necessitating a clear demonstration of his fallacies and the outcomes of his proposed changes. His work had to self-condemn. Satan's insistence on non-rebellion demanded that the universe see the deceiver unmasked and judged by his deeds. Even when infinite wisdom deemed Satan unfit for heaven, he was not immediately destroyed. God desired that his creatures serve him out of love and a clear understanding of his justice and mercy. The unfallen beings were not ready to grasp sin's full impact. Immediate destruction of Satan might have led them to fear God rather than love him. Therefore, evil had to mature, its principles fully revealed, so that God's justice and mercy would be undeniable. The ongoing revelation of Satan's principles was necessary to affirm God's eternal righteousness and the immutability of his law. The allegiance of God's creatures had to stem from a conviction of his benevolence, not fear. If Satan had been destroyed right away, the heavenly beings might have doubted God's justice. Instead, witnessing the full maturation of evil allowed them to see its consequences clearly. Through the ages, this unfolding revelation made evident the stark difference between God's governance and Satan's rebellion. Satan's rebellion serves as an eternal lesson for the universe, highlighting the severe consequences of sin. The unfolding of Satan's rule, impacting both angels and humans, illustrates the destructive outcomes of defying divine authority. This cosmic narrative stands as a perpetual safeguard, preventing holy beings from being misled about transgression and its repercussions. The rebellion revealed the essential connection between God's governance and the well-being of all his creatures, establishing a timeless testimony to divine law, sanctity, to the very end of the heavenly controversy, the great usurper continued to justify himself. When it was declared that he and his followers must be expelled from bliss, Satan boldly avowed his disdain for the Creator's law. He claimed angels needed no control and should follow their own will, which he believed would guide them rightly. He denounced divine statutes as restrictions of liberty, asserting his goal was to abolish the law to bring about a more glorious existence for the hosts of heaven. With one accord, Satan and his host blamed Christ for their rebellion, claiming that without his reproof they would not have rebelled. Stubborn and defiant in their disloyalty, they sought to overthrow God's government while portraying themselves as innocent victims. Despite their blasphemous claims, the arch-rebel and his sympathizers were banished from heaven, marking their fall from grace. 
Satan's narrative of victimhood continued with him casting himself and his followers as oppressed rather than rebellious. This deceit sought to undermine divine authority and gain sympathy. However, their expulsion was a direct result of their insubordination and falsehoods. Their downfall became a testament to their stubborn disloyalty and the falsity of their claims against God. Satan's rebellion did not end with his expulsion from heaven. On earth, he inspired humanity to defy divine law, mirroring his own rebellion. This spirit of disobedience manifests in resistance to God's commandments and the pursuit of liberty through transgression. Throughout history, the reproof of sin has incited hostility towards those who uphold divine standards. Satan's misrepresentation of God's character as tyrannical led to humanity's fall, echoing the rebellion that began in heaven. God, however, declared his true nature. The Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, and that will by no means clear the guilty. This divine proclamation stands against Satan's accusations, showcasing God's mercy and justice. In the aftermath of man's fall, God revealed his love and justice through the atonement. The banishment of Satan from heaven affirmed his justice, but when humanity sinned, God's infinite love was demonstrated by sacrificing his only son. This act of grace proved that the blame for sin lay solely with Lucifer's rebellion, not with God's governance. The cross became the ultimate argument, vindicating God's character and showcasing his justice and mercy to the entire universe. The atonement revealed that God's love is boundless. By giving up his son, God provided a path for humanity's redemption. This act demonstrated that the government of God was not to blame for sin, highlighting Lucifer's responsibility. The cross stands as a testament to God's justice and mercy, proving his law's righteousness. During Christ's earthly ministry, Satan's true character was unmasked. His relentless pursuit to destroy Jesus, blasphemous demands for homage and malicious temptations exposed his deceit. The rejection and crucifixion of Christ, fueled by Satan's hatred, revealed the depth of his evil. The universe witnessed the stark contrast between Satan's malevolence and Christ's love, solidifying the understanding of Satan's true nature. Satan's efforts to destroy Jesus revealed his true nature as a deceiver and accuser. His blasphemous demands and malicious actions laid bare his intentions. The universe saw the full extent of Satan's evil through his relentless persecution of Christ, contrasting sharply with the Savior's love and sacrifice. Christ's sacrifice on the cross marked the ultimate victory over Satan. After completing his mission, Jesus ascended to heaven where he was honored by all the angels. His humiliation ended and he was bestowed with a name above all names. This victory affirmed his divine nature and the success of his redemptive work. As it is written, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, John 17, 24. Then with inexpressible love and power came forth the answer from the Father's throne, let all the angels of God worship him, as found in Hebrews 1, 6. This victory was a defining moment. Christ's ascension and the honor he received from the angels signified the completion of his mission. His name was exalted above all, affirming his divine nature and the success of his redemptive work. The crucifixion revealed Satan's true character as a liar and murderer. His accusations against God's law were exposed as false. The contrast between Lucifer's desire for self-exaltation and Christ's self-sacrificial love demonstrated the destructiveness of sin. God's ultimate sacrifice in Christ reconciling the world to himself highlighted the depths of divine love and the righteousness of his law. Satan's deceit and malice were fully exposed through his actions against Christ. His accusations against God's law were shown to be lies. The crucifixion laid bare the contrast between Satan's self-seeking nature and Christ's sacrificial love, emphasizing the righteousness of God's law and the depth of his love for humanity. Even after Christ's death, Satan continued to mislead humanity, claiming that the law was unjust. However, Christ's sacrifice proved the law's immutability and God's justice. The penalty of sin fell upon Jesus, offering redemption to humanity. This act affirmed God's fairness and provided a path for humans to triumph over Satan through faith in Christ. Throughout this entire cosmic saga, you may have noticed what the main issue is, God's law. Satan has a problem with it. Christ did come to set us free, but his mission went beyond redemption. 
Contrary to popular belief, Jesus did not come to transfer or eliminate God's law with grace. Though grace is important, Christ came to earth to really magnify God's law and make it honorable. His life and death demonstrated the unchangeable nature of divine law. By fulfilling the law's demands, Christ showcased its eternal validity. His sacrifice emphasized that justice and mercy are foundational to God's government. Isaiah 42, 21 states, He will magnify the law and make it honorable. In the final judgment, it will be evident that there is no justification for sin. When God confronts Satan, the originator of evil will be speechless. The cross of Calvary, proclaiming the wages of sin as death, marked the ultimate defeat of Satan. Christ's triumph over death ensured the eventual eradication of sin. As Hebrews 2:14 says, through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, Lucifer's desire for self-exaltation led to his downfall, fulfilling the prophecy that no cause for sin exists. Nahum 1, 9 reveals, in the end, the universe will witness the full vindication of God's love and the permanent establishment of his just and merciful law, ensuring that sin will never arise again. Why does it seem like so many Christians appear to genuinely love Jesus, yet rebel against his law to the point where they're willing to defend the one who started this rebellion?